والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وأنم علينا يا عظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, almighty and glory. And peace be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I testify that there is no God except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah. Once again, my brothers and sisters, it's all the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his mercy. Upon us that Allah Azza wa Jal gathered us here tonight to be his guests in his house. It's a great honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank him. As Allah Almighty says, وَلَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَئِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٌ That if you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what Allah had given you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase from what Allah had given you. And then Allah Azza wa says, and if you deny, if you deny, Allah Azza wa Jalla didn't say that He will take away the ni'mah or the good that He had given you. Allah said His punishment is severe. This is the justice of Allah Azza wa Jal. We still, through the series of the prophets and the messengers, under the title of Never Ending Story, And for the last two Mondays, and tonight is the third Monday, we are speaking about this great man, the father of the prophets, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him to be as a full nation, as a nation, Ummah, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ Rabbi, أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى قَالَ أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ قَالَ بَلَى وَلَكِنْ لِيَطْمَئِنَّ قَلْبِي قَالَ فَخُذْ أَرْبَعَةً مِّنَ الطَّيْرِ فَصُرْهُنَّ إِلَيْكَ ثُمَّ اجْعَلْ عَلَى كُلِّ جَبَلٍ مِّنْهُنَّ جُزْءًا ثُمَّ ادْعُهُنَّ يَأْتِينَكَ سَعْيًا وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ A short event that took place between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his khalil, his close friend, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّي أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحِيِّ الْمَوْتَى One day Ibrahim said, O oh Allah, show me, O oh Allah, my Lord, show me how you bring life back to the dead. كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَ How you bring life back to the dead. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Ibrahim, أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ Don't you believe, O Ibrahim? Isn't it enough I said that I give death and life, and I give life to the dead? So Ibrahim alayhi salam, of course he's a prophet and a messenger of Allah, he believes that Allah azza wa jal brings the dead back alive, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that gives life and death. When Ibrahim said, Oh Allah, show me how you bring life back to the dead. It wasn't a question that Ibrahim is questioning Allah if Allah is capable of doing it. And Ibrahim responded back when Allah Azza wa said, Awalam tu'min, didn't you believe? He said, Bala, yes ya Allah, I do believe. Yes ya Allah, I do believe. وَلَكِنْ لِيَطْمَئِنَّ قَلْبِي It's just for my heart to feel comfortable. It's just for me to see the process of how you give life to the dead. 
So when Ibrahim alayhi salam asked that question, it wasn't a question that Ibrahim asked that he has doubt in Allah if Allah can do it or not. But it was just a question that Ibrahim would like to know or see or experience how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does that. When you're talking about Ibrahim alayhi salam, a prophet and a messenger, قَالَ بَلَا وَلَكِنْ لِيَطْمَئِنَّ قَلْبِ Yes, ya Allah, I do believe. But just for the sake of my heart feeling comfortable, just for the sake of me experiencing this, for the sake of me seeing something like that, it will increase my iman, it will increase my faith. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Ibrahim alayhi salam, فَخُذْ أَرْبَعَةً مِنَ الطَّيْرِ Allah azza wa jal ordered Ibrahim alayhi salam to grab four birds. To grab four birds. And to slaughter those four birds. And after being slaughtered, to chop them into pieces. And mix all the pieces together. And when, that, when that's done, put pieces on different parts on different hills and mountains around. So Ibrahim alayhi salam got four birds, he slaughtered them, he cut them into different pieces, he mixed all pieces together, the part of number one with number four, with number four, with number three, and all over a place. And then Ibrahim alayhi salam divided them all over the mountains that he was surrounded in. Now this is something that Ibrahim alayhi salam had something life in his hand. And Ibrahim alayhi salam himself experienced slaughtering them. And Ibrahim alayhi salam himself, the one that makes the bodies differently together. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, he's the one that spread them everywhere. When Ibrahim did that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ثُمَّ دْعُهُنَّ Now, stand in an isolated area and call those dead birds that you just slaughtered with your own hands and tell them to come to you. So Ibrahim alayhi salam did. He stood and he called upon the birds and he said, Come to me. So Allah Azza wa Jal made the four birds come back alive in his hands. Allah Azza wa Jal made the four dead birds that were slaughtered by the hands of Ibrahim alayhi salam mixed with different bodies, with different birds, come all in the hands of Ibrahim alayhi salam. They come to you with no delay. Wa'lam. And remember, and this is not only to Ibrahim alayhi salam, but to Ibrahim. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ And know that Allah Azza wa Jal is exalted in power and wise. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam. We left you with last week how Ibrahim alayhi salam was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take Hajar and he knew baby boy down in a valley which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes a valley that there is no life surrounded with. There is no plants, no animals, there is no water. And we heard how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing Ibrahim alayhi salam especially for many years waiting for a baby and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends him this beautiful baby child. And when Ibrahim alayhi salam gets attached to him, now the test comes from Allah. Who comes first? Your Lord or the creation? But Ibrahim alayhi salam proved to Allah azza wa jal that Allah and his orders come before anything. And Ibrahim left Hajar and his son Ismail in the middle of the valley of Mecca or Bakka, another name for it, and walks away. And we heard the strong heart of Hajar. When she asked Ibrahim alayhi salam, why are you doing this to us? Why are you doing this to us? And Ibrahim continued walking off. At the end she said, is this an order that came from your Lord Allah? And Ibrahim says, yes. And that's when, Ibra- when, that's when Hajar calls and says, by Allah, Allah would never neglect us. And Hajar will settle in that valley with her young or newly born baby with a bit of dates and water. And we heard how she started to go from the Safa and Marwa seven times when the food ran out and the water ran out. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exploded the will of Zamzam. And then life took place. We mentioned that how the tribe from Yemen came by the name of Jurhum and settled in Mecca. 
and Ibrahim alayhi salam used to come and visit Ismail and his wife Hajar once or twice a year. And now civilization and life start to take place in the valley of Mecca and the tribe of Jurhum increased and Ismail alayhi salam married from the tribe of Jurhum and learned the Arabic language from the tribe of Jurhum and he became so eloquent in the Arabic language and Ibrahim alayhi salam became so respected that they used to look up to him as the leader or the leader of the tribe or the leader of Mecca or the leader of the city alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam as I mentioned will come and visit his son and his wife Hazar once or twice a year and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the buraq and I mentioned to you is a beast that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for the prophets and messengers that they transport or travel on so Ibrahim alayhi salam used to come and see Ismail he used to come within seconds he'll be from Palestine in Mecca and from second and within seconds he'll be back in Palestine and then the big test comes to Ibrahim alayhi salam the great test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ikhwani there are prophets there are messengers but there weren't prophets and messengers and we remember them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them in the Quran al-Karim before they were prophets before because they were prophets and messengers but there are prophets and messengers and they are mentioned in the great book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Quran al-Karim because they paid a big price for being a prophet and a messenger because they sacrificed a great sacrifice for being prophet and a messenger now the big test comes to Ibrahim and you could imagine Ibrahim alayhi salam for 86 years waiting for a child and then in a moment that he had no hopes of having a child Allah gave him that child you could imagine and picture how, how, how the heart of Ibrahim was so attached to his son Ismail and then the sacrifice comes where Allah Azza wa Jal tells Ibrahim to move away Hajar and Ismail from him and Sarah now the bigger test comes when Ismail alayhi salam grows and he grows as a righteousness growing and Ismail alayhi salam becomes a young fit teenager righteous and pious God fearing loving Islam and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how beautiful is that for the father to see you could imagine now the heart of Ibrahim is even more attached to his son Ismail when he sees his son a young adult fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling to Allah worshipping Allah azza wa jal and the big test comes where Ibrahim alayhi salam says and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعْهُ السَّعْيَ قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ فَانْظُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى when Ismail alayhi salam reached an age of maturity he became a young man fit, strong a moment that every parent and father waits for to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now orders Ibrahim a great order where Ibrahim alayhi salam one night he will see himself slaughtering his own son Ismail and keep in mind my brothers and sisters the prophets and messengers do not see foolish dreams they don't see what me and you see we see ourselves flying up going down we see ourselves one day with this person, another day with that person, we see ourselves doing the wrong, doing the right. Prophets and messengers do not see any foolish dreams. What they see in their dreams is an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Ibrahim alayhi salam saw himself slaughtering his son Ismail, that means that's an indication to Ibrahim alayhi salam through his dreams that Allah orders you to slaughter your son. And now Ibrahim alayhi salam is in a great test. He's in a very, very tough position. Slaughter your son. Slaughter your son. Maybe we think about it. 
it's easy, but think about it happening to you, you realize it's very hard. Slaughter your own son. Khwani people can't even slaughter a sheep. It's too hard for them to slaughter a sheep. Could you imagine when you slaughter your own son? But what was the response of Ibrahim alayhi salam? He had no other option except saying Sam'an wa ta'an or Allah we heard and we obey regardless to why you order me. If it's to slaughter my son, then your order must be implemented. And now Ibrahim alayhi salam will go to his son Ismail. And he'll tell him. And look at the beautiful dialogue between the father and the son. قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّا إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ Ibrahim alayhi salam went to Ismail and he told him, O oh son, I saw in a dream that I was slaughtering you. I saw in the dreams that I was slaughtering you. And Ismail alayhi salam, and Allah knows if he was a prophet or a messenger back then, but he's a son of a prophet and a messenger. So he understands. He has the understanding of the concept of the prophecy and the messenger. And Ibrahim could have done it in a way, his son is asleep, he goes and slaughters him. But he wanted his son to be part of the sacrifice. He wanted his son to be part of the rewards. So he went up to Ismail and he told him, Oh son, I saw in the dreams that I was slaughtering you. Full stop, you know. I'm a prophet and a messenger and you know if I see something in the dreams, that's an order from Allah Azza wa And Ismail understands that. So Ibrahim told him, فَانْظُرْ مَا ذَاتَرَى So what do you think of his son? Consulting him. Subhanallah, consulting. Could you imagine a father going to his son, or son, I've been ordered by Allah to, kill, uh, to slaughter you. So what do you think? What would the son do? He'll slaughter you before you slaughter him. <laughs> so what did Ismail alayhi salam say? Oh son, I've been ordered by Allah to slaughter you. I saw in the dreams. So what do you think? So Ismail alayhi salam said, قَالَ يَا أَبَتِي O father, افعل ما تؤمر. Do what you have been ordered. ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصابرين that you'll find me by the will of Allah from the patient ones. Subhanallah, this is, this is the Prophet. This is, this is someone who fears Allah. This is someone whose love is for Allah, who lives for Allah, who will die for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh father, do what Allah had ordered you. If Allah had ordered you to slaughter me, then do so. Insha'Allah, by the will of Allah, you will find me from those who have patience. This is the true heart of someone who loves Allah and obeys Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now Ibrahim alayhi salam, could you imagine Ibrahim is a prophet and a messenger? A heart that's not mixed with any dirt. So it's a heart that has sympathy. It's a heart that has love and care. Deep inside the heart of Ibrahim, he's crying. But this is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can't delay it. And he knows that from the outside, it is a sacrifice and hardship. And giving up something great. But the reality of it, you are giving Back to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah will never let down someone who gives it back to him. And Ibrahim will take his son. He goes and looks for a good place to slaughter his son away from his mother. Because if his mother knows about him, maybe she'll get more sympathetic as a woman. She can't grab her compassion or her emotions. She'll come up to Ibrahim, stop, no, no, no. Or maybe Ibrahim might get convinced. Although we doubt, but when he sees that position, so Ibrahim walked away and he took his son and his son followed his father. At that moment, Iblis will come trying to turn Ibrahim away from what he saw. And he came up to Ibrahim and he told him, Oh Ibrahim, you're going to take your, you're gonna go and slaughter your son? You just saw a dream, maybe it was just a dream, a foolish dream. So Ibrahim grabbed stones and threw him. One of the highest grades of patience is fasting. Allah said 
in the divine hadith illa sawm fa innahu li wa ana ajzi bih only fasting is sincerely dedicated for me and i'm the one who will reward for that stoned him then he went to ismail trying to turn ismail away from following his father and ismail also started to cast him with rocks and stones and then he came to both of them and three of them started to cast him with rocks and stones and that's why when he got to Hajj, he threw those three different throwers reminding himself when he attempt to do something for allah be firm and strong and then they come to a big rock suruput to put ismail to lay Ismail on it and to slaughter him. And subhanAllah, ya ikhwani, look what Ismail tells his father at that time. He tells him, Oh father, make my face towards the ground. So when you look at me, make my face towards the ground. So in case, if you look at my face, and you see my face while you're slaughtering, you might get some sympathy, you walk away from Allah's order. So turn my face around. And sharpen your knife so you could slaughter me quickly. And you continue with the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Falamma aslama wa tallahu lil jabeen. When, when Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam submitted their will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he turned Ibrahim, Ibrahim turned Ismail on his forehead towards the ground. Now the opening comes from Allah Azza wa Jal. وَنَادَيْنَاهُ أَيَّا إِبْرَاهِيمُ Isma Ibrahim alayhi salam grabs his son. His face is towards the ground. The knife is sharpened in his hand. He puts it on the neck of Ismail alayhi salam and he tries to slaughter. And every time he tries to slaughter, the knife will spin the other side. And again he tries to slaughter and the knife will spin the other side. Because the knife will cut only by the will of Allah. As the fire will only burn by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the call will come from Allah azza wa jal. And we called him, Oh Ibrahim, قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا You had already fulfilled the vision that you saw. قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا إِنَّا كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ This is enough. Oh Ibrahim, you had submitted and surrendered to Allah. What, your heart, what's in your heart? Allah Azza wa Jalla knows about it. Slaughtering Ismail, it's now flesh and blood. But it's all about you attempt to obey Allah Azza wa Jalla and to follow his orders. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw that from Ibrahim alayhi salam. And he saw that from his son Ismail alayhi salam. And Allah Azza wa Jalla will call Ibrahim to reward him the great reward. Inna kadhalika najzi muhsinin And this is how indeed we reward those who do right. إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْبَلَاءُ الْمُبِينَ This is obviously a true and a tough trial. A true and a tough trial. No prophet was tested the way Ibrahim was tested in that. It's easy sometimes to give out your wealth, to give up your wealth, your land, to give up some of this dunya. But your own son sometimes is very hard. People will give up their own lives for their children. But when the order of Allah Azza wa Jal comes to people like Ibrahim alayhi salam, there is no delaying Allah's orders. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward Ibrahim, وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ And we had given Ibrahim an alternative. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down from the heavens. Allah sent down from the heavens a sheep. It's been narrated that this sheep had grazed in the heavens, in the paradise, for over, 50, for over 40 years. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down that sheep down to Ibrahim alayhi salam as an alternative to slaughter that sheep, not, Ibra, not Ismail. It's just about your sacrifice. And Ibrahim showed Allah azza wa jal, he's willing to sacrifice everything he's got for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٌ كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Peace be upon on Ibrahim. This is how we reward those who do right. إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Ibrahim is from our righteous believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Ibrahim, وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ الَّذِي وَفَّى عَنْ Ibrahim the one that fulfilled Allah's orders. Everything that Allah had ordered Ibrahim to do, even when it came to slaughtering his own son, Ibrahim fulfilled Allah's orders. And some of the scholars describe that the description that Allah had described Ibrahim or Ibrahim alladhi wafa is one of the greatest descriptions that Allah had described a prophet and a messenger. Wa Ibrahim alladhi wafa and Ibrahim, the one that fulfilled his obligations towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he fulfilled his obligations to Allah. And this is the ikhwan, and remember when you give for Allah, when you sacrifice for Allah, even if it's something very valuable and precious in your life, remember, remember it will never ever go for waste. Ibrahim was willing to give his own son for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah azza wa jal gave him the great rewards in return. So from the outside it always looks hardship. And looks a big sacrifice. But the reality of it is a great reward from Allah Azza wa Jalla. It's a great opening from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A great reward coming from Allah Azza wa Jalla. And this is the beautiful thing about the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Is you hear how many times he sacrifices for Allah. And every time he gives for Allah, Allah Azza wa Jalla will give him a greater reward in return. And then what happened after that? Now the great reward comes in return. Allah Azza wa Jal, not only after he ordered him to slaughter Ismail, not only that Allah Azza wa Jal kept Ismail for him, but now Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will give him another child, Ishaq. Rewards. Openings from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And the angels will come to Ibrahim alayhi salam one day. Mikael, Jibreel, some narration says Israfil, other narration says the angel of death. Three angels will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the appearance of human beings. And they'll come to Ibrahim alayhi salam when he was in Palestine. And Ibrahim alayhi salam was nicknamed as the father of the guests. Ibrahim had a quality in him, he doesn't like to eat alone. And he never eats alone. He'll go and find someone from the street, just bring him to eat with him. But does not eat alone. Generosity, karam, jud. This is the quality of the prophets and the messengers and the believers. And one day Ibrahim alayhi salam will see three strange men. Blessings and guidance appears on their faces. So Ibrahim alayhi salam invited them over as guests of his. And they come. And they say to Ibrahim, Salam, peace be upon you. So Ibrahim alayhi salam responds back, Qala salamun qawmun munkarun, peace be upon you too, people that we don't know. Never seen him before. But they look righteous people. And Ibrahim welcomes them in his house. And then doubt goes in Ibrahim's heart. Who's these people? They're not from the town. But they don't look like they came from outside. Their clothes are very clean. They're very bright. If they came from outside, they would have been a bit more dusty. So that's going to the heart of Ibrahim alayhi salam. But Ibrahim alayhi salam continued his job as someone who has guests over his house. So Ibrahim will go and slaughter a young or a small goat. And Ibrahim alayhi salam will forward the goats the goat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَمَا لَبِثَ أَنْجَاءَ بِعِجْلٍ حَنِيثٍ عِجْلٍ حَنِيثٍ A barbecued goat. And he forwards the food to them. And Ibrahim alayhi salam sits down to eat. And he's amazed. You know, these people, they traveled, and they came, they must be hungry. He sits and Ibrahim alayhi salam sees them, they're not eating. They're not even interested to eat. So Ibrahim got scared. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says this in the Quran al-Kareem, فَقَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِمْ فَلَمَّا رَأَى أَيْدِيَهُمْ لَا تَصَلُوا إِلَيْهِمْ نَكِرَهُمْ وَأَوْجَسَ مِنْهُمْ خِيفَةً When Ibrahim saw them, they're not eating from this food. Why aren't you eating? There's something strange. Ibrahim got more scared. أَوْجَسَ مِنْهُمْ خِيفَةً Fear went in his heart. Not fear, he's scared from them. Doubt, who's these people? Very strange. Indeed, they are strange. Not even human beings, they are angels. So when the angels coming in the form of human beings saw that Ibrahim start to get scared from them or doubting them, قَالُوا لَا تَخَفْ Don't be afraid of us. We are inna رُسُلُ Rabbik. We are the messengers of your Lord. We came to you for a mission and a bushra, a good news coming to you on our way. Where? On our way to Qawm Lut, the tribe of Lut who are going to destroy that land. Lut alayhi salam, inshallah, this is our next story. Lut alayhi salam was sent to a land, to a city called Sadum or Al Mu'tafika. And they were the most corrupt people ever existed on earth at that time. Homosexuality never existed until those people. The men used to go with men. And Allah mentions that in the Quran Kareem. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He sent those three angels, Jibreel, Mikael. And as I mentioned, there's a difference of opinion whether it was the angel of death or Israfi, the third angel. They were going to the land of Lut to destroy the land of Lut. But on their way, they went past Ibrahim alayhi salam for the good news and reward of why he just sacrificed when he went to slaughter Ismail as an order from Allah Azza wa Jal. وَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, and we had given him the good news of a wise child. So they told him, Oh, Ibrahim, where are the messengers of your Lord? And we are on our way to the land of Lut to destroy it. But Allah sent us through here to tell you that Allah will give you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be rewarding you and granting you a wise child. Who was listening? His wife Sarah. Sarah, at that moment she was 90 years old. And when she was young, she couldn't get children. Now when she's old, she's going to get children. And how old is Ibrahim alayhi salam? Ibrahim at that moment was 120 years old. So when Sarah heard the messengers of Allah telling Ibrahim they are going to destroy the land of Lut, Allah says, Fatahika, she started to laugh and smile. She was laughing and smiling. Why? Because she knew that the tribe of Lut was so corrupt and she was happy that Allah is going to destroy them. And inshallah, we'll come to the story of Lut. And while she was laughing, the big news, the good, shocking news comes. Oh Sarah, you're 90 years old, well there's good news for you, you're going to fall pregnant. You're going to fall pregnant. So Allah Azza wa said, فَسَكَّتْ وَجَاءَ She started to say, what? And she started to touch her face. أَأَلِدُ وَأَنَا عَجُوزٌ وَأَذَا بَعْلِ شَيْخَةٌ I'm going to give birth and I'm an old woman. And my husband is even older than me. He's an old shaykh, he's an old man. How would this be possible? When I was young, I couldn't even get children. Now, 90 years old and my husband, 120 years old, he's gonna, we're going to get children? So she said, this is amazing. Amazing. This is absolutely amazing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, أَتَعْجَبِينَ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ They told her, what Allah had mentioned in the Qur'an, are you amazed from Allah's matter? What's this compared to what Allah can do? What's this compared to what Allah can do? You are amazed from this? أَتَعْجَبِينَ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ You are amazed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's matter? Well, there is another good news for you. What is it? وَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِإِسْحَاءَ وَوَسَنَّاهَ بِإِسْحَاقَ وَمِنْ وَرَاءِ إِسْحَاقَ يَعْقُوبِ Not only that you'll fall pregnant and you'll get إِسْحَاق, you'll even live long enough until you see the son of إِسْحَاق يَعْقُوب. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her three rewards in return. The first reward for her and her husband, 
And this is all why the sacrifice, my brothers, the sacrifice, my sisters, when you sacrifice for Allah, remember that sacrifice is not going to go away. It's going to come back and pay for you in this dunya and in the hereafter. So Allah Azza wa Jal had given her first of all, the first good news that she'll fall pregnant, the second good news that she'll live long enough to see her, her child growing up. Because this is what many people at the old age, they get upset is when they fall pregnant. Alhamdulillah, I fall pregnant, but am I going to live enough to see this child growing and seeing the fruits of this child? For Allah Azza wa Jal gave her the good news, not only that you'll see him grow, but you also see your grandson Yaqub. And from Yaqub who comes, Yusuf alayhi salam. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said when he was asked, who is the most generous person? He said, the generous person is the son of the generous person, the son of the generous person, the son of the generous person, Yusuf, the son of Yaqub, the son of Ishaq, the son of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Can you imagine? He's a prophet, his father is a prophet, his grandfather is a prophet, and the grandfather of his father is also a prophet. Yusuf alayhi salam. And inshallah, also the story of Yusuf, we'll listen to it inshallah soon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu alaykum ahlul bayt. Inna wa hamidun majid. By the blessings, the mercy of Allah, and the blessings of Allah be upon you all, the people of this house, which is Ibrahim, Sarah, and his descendants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Ibrahim alayhi salam instead of one child, now he's got two children. And Ishaq came after the incident of Ismail. Why do I mention that? It's because the Jews claim that the one that was, the one that was supposed to be slaughtered was Ishaq. Why? Because Bani Israel come from the descendants of Ishaq. But the Quran Kareem is very clear that the one that was going to be slaughtered with this Ismail. And Ishaq came after that incident. Ishaq came after that incident. And the days went past. And then another order comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Ibrahim alayhi salam. In a moment, in a time, in an era, where no one or hardly anyone was saying la ilaha illallah. A moment that was covered and more dictated by pagan worshippers, idol worshippers, shirk, and all the different ideologies or theologies or ways of worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order Ibrahim alayhi salam to build a house as a symbol of the oneness of Allah Almighty. Especially at that moment. A moment spread of corruption and shirk and idol worshipping, and associating others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now Allah azza wa jal orders Ibrahim alayhi salam to build a house that we know by the name of Kaaba in the middle of the valley of Mecca as the symbol of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah is one and only one and the only, worth of, only one worthy of worship. And Ibrahim alayhi salam will go to the valley of Mecca. And he'll see Ismail alayhi salam. And he'll say to Ismail, O oh son, Allah had ordered me an order. So Ismail will say, O oh Allah, O oh, oh, oh dad, do what, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordered you to do. So Ibrahim told Ismail, And would you help me? So Ismail said, Yes, I will help you. Subhanallah, this is how the father treats his son. And this is a good example, ikhwani, for us as fathers. Get your children participating into the hasanat, participating into the da'wah, participating into the deen. One of the beautiful things that I see, I father sometimes, when he's coming out of the mosque, especially on Friday, instead of him putting that 20 or $50 in the donation box, he gives it to his son, tells him, son, you go and put it. Get your son active into it. At least some understanding will get into your son's heart. When you pray, son, come and pray with me. When you do something for Allah, get your sons, get your children involved. Get your daughter involved. Get your son involved. And this is how Ibrahim alayhi salam dealt with his son Ismail, getting him involved in everything. He told him, oh son, Allah ordered me an order. So he said, oh father, do what Allah had ordered you. So he told him, would you help me? He said, yes, dad. Yes, father. 
He's, he's learned from his father. He's got the love of this deen from his father, Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَإِذْ بَوَّأْنَا الْإِبْرَاهِيمَ مَكَانَ الْبَيْتِ أَلَّا تُشْرِكْ بِي شَيْئًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and we showed Ibrahim the place of the bait. al bait is another name for the Kaaba. al bait is the house. The house is referring to the Kaaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel that showed Ibrahim alayhi salam the place where Ibrahim must build the Kaaba. And there is narrations that says that Ibrahim was instructed by Jibreel on how to build the Kaaba. Say so Ibrahim alayhi salam was the builder and Jibreel was the architect that showed Ibrahim exactly where the place is and how to build it. And Ismail was the laborer with his father Ibrahim, the builder working on building the Kaaba. And they start to build the Kaaba. And Ibrahim alayhi salam will put the foundations of the Kaaba. The Kaaba has foundations. When we showed Ibrahim the place of the bait, the house, and Allah Azza says, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعْ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ When Ibrahim put the foundations of the house, the Kaaba and Ismail, there is foundations. The Kaaba has Strong, solid foundations. And those foundations, Allah describes it as ayah, a miracle and a verse to the day of judgment. At the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is thousands of years after Ibrahim, the Kaaba was cracked because of a flood that came past and because of a long time that the Kaaba wasn't renovated. So they demolished the whole Kaaba and they came to the foundation. And the narration says that they came to round rocks, like round mountains, green. Never seen something like them before. Green round rocks like the mountains stuck to each other. And when everyone saw this, this is something unusual. They never seen something like it before. So they were too scared to move those rocks. They want to refurbish and rebuild the whole cover. So no one had dared or had the guts or had the courage to remove those round rocks they've never seen before. So one at the end came down and with his axe he removed or his shovel tried to move one and a great lighting came from beneath it that this person was going to go blind from the light. So he left it and they understood that these are foundations not to be touched. These are the foundations not to be touched. And Ibrahim alayhi salam will build the Kaaba. And Ismail will put the bricks together, he'll collect the rocks, and he'll come to his father, and Ibrahim will lay the rocks down. And when there were rocks over rocks, there was no cement or mud, there were just rocks over rocks, and Ibrahim alayhi salam continued to build the Kaaba until it was too high for him, it was too high for him, to go more longer or higher, to go more higher in the building. So he asked his son to get a high rock that he could stand on. He asked Ismail to get him a high rock that he could stand on, that gives him the opportunity to go higher in building the Kaaba. And Ismail will bring this rock. And Ibrahim will stand on that rock, barefooted. And from the long standing on that rock, Ibrahim's foot, 
will go deep into that rock. And that rock and that place is where Allah says, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى This is Maqam Ibrahim. Maqam Ibrahim, when you go, inshaAllah, to Hazz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and take from Maqam Ibrahim that place as a place where you pray to Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's why they sunnah, when you do tawaf, you go behind Maqam Ibrahim and you pray. But now when you go and you see Maqam Ibrahim is about 15 meters away from the Kaaba. At the time of Umar, when Muslims increased, people start to get, Muslims start to get overcrowded. And the maqam used to be in the way that people used to fall down. Say, so Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, from his istihad, he moved away 15 meters. He moved away 15 meters, but originally was next to the Kaaba. And then, Ibrahim alayhi salam building the Kaaba, laying the bricks, and Ismail, as an Iberian son to his father and before his father to his Lord Allah Azza wa Jal, bringing the rocks. And while they were building, they were making dua, saying, Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiyu al Oh Allah, accept from us, accept from us this action. You are all here and all Noah. Rabbana waj'anna muslimain laka wa min dhurriyatina ummatan muslimatan lak. وَأَرِنَا مَنَسْئِلْكَ وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ Oh Allah, accept us to be righteous Muslims to you. Accept us to be righteous, submit us to you. And show us, and show us the way of worship, the way that we worship you in regards of performing the haz or performing the actions of haz. وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا And accept our repentance. You are the one that accepts the repentance. And then he said, O oh Allah, وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ O oh Allah, send among the people of this. From them, from among them, send them. رَسُولًا A messenger. They will call them to your religion and teach them your book. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the dua of Ibrahim when Allah sent Muhammad from the people of Mecca to teach them the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to teach them the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the Kaaba was built, Ibrahim will constantly stand on the side, look at the Kaaba from far away, see any angle that's out of line, any height that's higher than the other side, and constantly contemplating and thinking the best way that he could perfect the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now the Kaaba is built. But every corner of the Kaaba, four corners, they all look the same. So if you want to start circulating around the Kaaba, where are you going to start from? So Ibrahim told his son Ismail, O son, go and find me a rock different from all the rocks that you see. To put it in one corner, to distinguish the corner that this is the beginning of the Kaaba. So Ibrahim, after this order to his son Ismail, was so tired. He was so tired from working during the day and night and building the Kaaba. So he told his father, Oh father, I feel a bit lazy, tired. I feel a bit lazy, tired. So Ibrahim told him, Get up and go and do this. So Ismail got up. An order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his father, he went. And he went looking for rocks, rocks. And most of the rocks... All the stones, they all look the same. After a while, Ismail comes back. And he sees his father carrying this white rock to put it in a corner. But this rock, where did it come from? It's not a common rock that you could find anywhere, especially in the area. So he told him, oh father, where did you get this rock, white rock from? He said, I got it from the one that doesn't need you or gets lazy. I got it from the one that doesn't need you or gets lazy. Jibreel got it from me from the heavens. And that's the rock that we call the black rock. And now it's black. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, it was white and it became black from the sins of people. It was white and it became black from the sins of people. And now it's black. And if you see it, it's a black rock. And it's not as big as it used to be. Throughout years, 
He reduced a few tips here and there, fell down, and was stolen in some areas. So it's smaller than the original size. And now, the now the Kaaba has been built, the Hajar is in its corner, the house of Allah Azza wa Jal is there. And by the way, the way Ibrahim built it in its size and length is different to its size now. When the, re, the Arab rebuilt it, as the story I mentioned to you, they didn't have enough halal money to build it the way it was originally built. So they had to strengthen its, increase its height and reduce from its width. And there used to be two doors, one from, one you go in from and the other one you go out from. But the, at the time of the Prophet والسلام, and before the prophecy when the incident of the flooding took place, they only made it one door. And they made the door so high that you need steps to go into. So only the rich and the wealthy ones enter. And it stayed like that till this day. The Prophet والسلام, he told Aisha, after 20 years of the prophecy, what did he tell her? He said, O oh, Aisha, by Allah, if your people went new into Islam, I would have destroyed the Kaaba right now and rebuilt it the way it was built by Ibrahim alayhi salam. The right length, the right width, the right height. And I would have opened two doors. One from the east and the other one from the west. One you go in from, the other one you walk out from. And I would have made it low enough for people to walk in. Not only the rich ones, not only the ones with wealth. Now the door is higher than me, about at least two meters. So you need a stairs to get into. Subhanallah. And now the Kaaba has been built. What's the next thing been built? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells Ibrahim, the Kaaba has been built. Now call people to come and visit the Kaaba. So Ibrahim looks around, who's there? Who's going to come? There's no one around. So he said, oh Allah, where is my voice going to reach to? I'll call and call, who's going to hear me? Two, three people? So Allah Azza wa Jal told Ibrahim, oh Ibrahim, you do your job and what you've been ordered to do, and leave the rest on us. We do the rest. We give the results. So Ibrahim got up and he said, All people around the world, Allah had built a house of His, and He orders you to come and perform pilgrimage. So come and perform pilgrimage. So Allah made the voice of Ibrahim reach everywhere. Till this day that He go and perform pilgrimage because of the call of Ibrahim. وَأَذِّنْ بِالنَّاسِ فِي الْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ دَامِرٍ يَأْتُوكَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ And call people for Hajj. You find people walking to this place, walking with their feet to this place, or coming with their camels, or coming with anything to this place. And from that day, millions and trillions of people go and perform Hajj and visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Hajj worship started, and the respect of the Kaaba entered the hearts of people. And Ibrahim alayhi salam went back to Palestine. And Ibrahim alayhi salam lived the rest of his life in Palestine. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Ibrahim the suhuf, the chapters. And the suhuf of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah knows better whether there were different chapters or all chapters into one book. Allah knows better. The Prophet alayhi salatu was saying, said, Kana amthkana suhaf Ibrahim amthalam kullaha. It was all examples that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave wisdom, wise examples for people to learn and understand. And the Prophet alayhi salatu mentioned some of them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the soul of Ibrahim alayhi salam in Palestine in a place called Habron in the Hebrew language they're called Habron and that's why we call it the Arab now it's named as the Khalil and a Khalil is a very well-known city in Palestine it's a, one of the biggest cities in Palestine and Ibrahim alayhi salam passed away aged 175 and he was buried by his two sons Ismail and Ishaq in the Khalil in Palestine Sallallahu ala Ibrahim alayhi salam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
give our Prophet والسلام, the peace and blessings and reward our Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, the greatest of rewards and reward our Prophet Muhammad والسلام, the greatest of rewards. And inshallah, we will continue with you with the other stories of the Prophets, the story of the children of Ibrahim Ismail. I will speak about him, inshallah. I will speak about Ishaq. I will speak about Lut. I will speak about Ismail and Ishaq. And there's not much mentioned about Ismail and Ishaq. But inshallah, we'll speak also about Prophet Lut, alayhim, as-salat, wa taslim. Mm-hmm.